Yeah, good evening once again. Believing that Molimu is audible for those who have joined. I know it's our first class for financial management uh, this semester. Talk about financial management. So we are having a uh, financial management. Of course, our first uh, class uh, this semester for preparation of uh, December exams. And uh, as, we are, as we normally tend to start our classes, both of our classes, even before we proceed, uh, we'll always uh, share, of course, uh, the, in course, the rules of the class. Uh, first of all, I'll want us to, when you are beginning uh, this journey for financial management, one thing that I always want us to have in mind is that to approach financial management with an open mind. Like financial management, by the way, is one of the easiest, is one of the easiest uh, paper that we'll ever have probably in our course. Just like uh, financial reporting, you'll find that financial management is also very practical. At times, I normally wonder why majority of the students they normally tend to say like, uh, oh, Molimu, we are studying financial management. Where are we going to apply this uh, concept of financial management? So you'll find that financial management by this is very practical. So that's why I want us to, when, uh, when you are starting, I want us to have this mind approaching it that this is a very practical paper. You're going to kind of uh, find these concepts in uh, your day-to-day -day activities whenever you be practicing the concept of finance. And also the beauty part of it is that uh, the introductory part of what you are doing today. Actually, it will give us a foundation of uh, everything that would always be expected to cover in any field of financial management, regardless which course you are doing in financial management. You'll find that financial management in Kenya is the same financial management in Rwanda, is the same financial management when you go to UK, the same financial management when you go to US. So literally, it is universal. Literally, it is universal. So rule number one, we approach financial management with open mind and not only for exams but rather for what for us to be able to acquire that knowledge and that's why like in our first classes for financial uh, reporting i'd ask this question for those who are in who are in the difference between studying uh, the those who normally tend to studying the difference between studying and learning. I know scholar, you're in class. Scholar, what did you mention of the difference between these two? I know scholar was in class. We said um, learning is acquiring knowledge. Uh huh. While studying is an event, you're just studying maybe for exams or for a specific purpose. But learning, you acquire you acquire knowledge over time. Very true. So you notice that uh, studying is always for the purpose of a certain event. When this event is done, basically, you have achieved that purpose of studying. And event, in this case, for students, basically, you're looking at what? Exams purposes. So that's why many a times you'll find that uh, students who are doing professional, most of this generation of ours, today, Molim is going to teach us very well. We are going to understand the concepts very well. But when you ask of the same same question, probably like some few months after exams, you can't remember anything simply because you are doing it for this event. And that event literally is what? That event literally is exams. But if you approach it in the case that you want to learn, remember learning is always acquisition of knowledge. Once you have acquired this knowledge, you can literally sit down with Frederick and teach Frederick because you had acquired that knowledge. You are not doing this for a certain event. So rule number two in our class, whenever we are doing financial management, I want us to approach it with this case, acquisition of knowledge. I want us to learn and not study. We won't be studying FM. But what I want us to always tend to do, I want us to learn FM. I want us to learn financial management, not for an event which is 
purposely exams. As much as exams, it is very important, but you'll find that if you approach it with a mind of planning, now you'll find that even handling examinations, it will always be very, very easy. And that's why when we say that financial management is one of the easiest paper that we can that we can have. So that is rule number two. Then for the purpose now of exams, because as at the end of the day, as much as you're learning, you must also pass off, you must also pass exams. You realize that financial management, the setup of uh, basically uh, the trend that has been there, of course, after the syllabus was amended, you'll find that financial management, as much as it is a computation paper, and these are basically a qualitative paper, you'll find that uh, in this case, what will happen, we'll be having 30 to 40%. This is theory. This is theory. 30 to 40% will literally be theory. Say like uh, 70 to 60%, this now will be what? This now will be computation. So my good students, you realize that for the purpose of exams, the theory part is also very important. These are literally marks that can take you places you've never seen before. Assuming it is only financial management that you are remaining with the intermediate level, you'll find that the theory marks can take you to advanced level. You've never seen advanced level before. So you'll find that understanding for the purpose of exam, the structure is it will always be upon us. Anytime you're handling financial management, it will always be important for us to do it, for us to balance, for us to balance. We balance the theory part as well as the computation part. If you're able to do that, you'll find that passing a firm, it will always be a one-touch item. You just do it once, pop, you're through with it. So the approach that I'll really insist is, as you are starting this kindly, let us have this approach that we are learning financial management and not studying financial management that will help us a lot also at times molimu will also be looking at some practical situation i know probably this will not be tested in your exam but molimu will always tend to squeeze time and kind of give us a practical perspective of how we normally tend to apply financial management in our day to day activities that will be very very important for us to for us to know that for us to know that so noting that as our tradition suggests we are going to literally start by analyzing what financial management entails some of the specific items that you must be very good at and also in addition to that it will be very important for us to understand the key foundations that we should always tend to have Anytime we are dealing with what? Anytime you are dealing with financial management. So the purpose of this class today will be for us to analyze, for us to summarize the key concepts that you must be very good at whenever we are dealing with financial management. And to do that, first of all, let us list the topics that will be expected to cover as at the end of our as at the end of our training, as at the end of our training. So you'll find that literally, we normally tend to have like uh, 14 topics. Imagine financial reporting has seven topics. Financial management has 14 topics. And you'll find that the strategy that we're going to use literally, it will give us chance to clear all these 14 topics. Because remember that as at the end of the day, we are looking at only how many months for the purpose of exams? We are looking at only like three months for the purpose of exams. So therefore, we must be very smart. We must be very smart in the way that will help us to clear this, all these topics in advance and also give us room to do our revision. So Molim will also be sharing these strategies. So mentioning that, basically, a lot us to analyze this, a lot us to analyze this. We start with topic number one for financial management. Topic number one, and you'll find that uh, whichever course that you are doing for financial management, regardless if you are 
in whichever country in the globe, you'll find that this will always be the introductory part. The introductory part of financial management, it will always be upon us to understand the overview of financial management. That is, of course, uh, the overview. Talk about overview of financial management. Overview of financial management. As you might suggest, when you give birth to a child, right? This child, you can't start giving this child ugali. You can't start giving this child porridge, right? This child, of course, must always be gargled a bit, it must always be given probably milk from the cheese of a mom, so that this person, the, the child should, should be growing, right? The same concept will also apply with our studies. You know, like, we can't give you, like, porridge at once. You must start from somewhere by giving you milk, right, from the cheese of the mom. So, like, at this point, looking at overview, what will overview entail? Overview, my good students at this point should find that it's just a matter of introducing you now to the world of financial management. At this point, you are assuming that you don't know financial management. You've never seen financial management anywhere. It's the first time that you are coming to this world of financial management. So literally, you don't know anything in relation to what? In relation to financial management. So what you are going to do basically in topic number one is basically to give you the overview is literally to tell you now you are in this world and what are the rules of this world? Who rules this world? What are the principles that you need to adopt in this world? So in that case, you'll find that literally majority of the concepts in topic number one will literally be theoretical. Topic number one will literally be theoretical. So the moment we are able to be introduced in the world of financial management. You'll find that uh, topic number two, we will be expected to cover what we are referring to as the financing decisions. Talk about the financing decisions here. Talk about the financing decisions. Now, my good students, you have been introduced to the world of financial management. At least you know some few terms in financial management. So looking at it in the point of the financing decision now, at least we are making some baby steps, right? We are making some baby steps in relation to what? In relation to what will be expected to cover and understand. The financing decision will find that literally it will entail various components such as the objectives of financing decision. Talk about maybe the sources of finance. I want to invest here, I want to invest there. What are the sources of finance that we need to consider? So it is all about us now being introduced to the first step, right? First of all, yes, at least you have been introduced to what financial management is. So we are making, we are making baby steps, right? We are making baby steps. You are making baby steps. So you'll find that also topic number two, my good students here, topic number two will literally entail the theory component of financial management as well. So whatever that will be covering topic number two is also 100% theoretical. So looking at that case, if we proceed to topic number three, what will topic number three entails? Topic number three, basically, now I've understood where we can get a source of finance. I've understood basically the objectives of making some various financial decisions. Now, the other key element that you must also be able to understand is what you normally refer to as what financial institutions and markets. So talk about financial institutions right financial institutions and markets financial institutions and markets very important that we should be able to do what we should be able to understand like now if i told you to talk of financial management of course there are institutions that must also be there to guide and assist us so what you'll realize at this point is that the first three topics these are 100 percent theoretical these are theory literally the first three topics here, we are talking of what? These are literally theory. These are literally what? Theory. These are literally theory. So in this case, you find that basically we are talking of what? We are talking of the theory part. We are talking of the theory part. So after talking of that, now this topic that you are looking at basically is the backbone of financial management. Topic that we want to look at right now, which is topic number four. Topic number four here, 
this is the backbone of financial management time value of money time value of money so my good students will find that i'll just be honest with you you can't pass financial management confidently if you are not good in this topic if i told you to take the human analogy whereby you say you as a human literally there you must operate without a heart you can't operate right your heart must be beeping for you to for you to operate so you'll find that at this point take time value of money as the heart as the heart of financial management that is to say without the heart you can't function right without without the heart you literally can't function so this is very important time value of money is actually the heart of financial management this is the heart of fm making it one of the most important one of the most important topics in financial management making it one of the most important topics i am really insisting on this topic number four once you are able to understand topic number four my good students if i told you you are to proceed to the next topic which is topic number five here basically talk of uh, topic number five topic number five here we are looking at topic five topic five you'll find that what we'll be talking about here is a concept of business slash financial assets valuation financial assets valuation financial assets valuation so this is what will happen the moment you are good in topic number four the concept in topic number four will literally affect us directly in topic number five it will literally affect us directly in topic number five so if you miss topic number four concept you'll be having a challenge in topic number five if you miss a concept in topic number four you literally be having a challenge in topic number five so topic number five at this point all of you might be having or rather you might have heard of valuation of our assets or valuation of securities we'll be talking of valuation of ordinary shares valuation of debentures valuation of preferred shares so you'll find that the concept in basically topic number uh, four the same concept you're going to apply it in topic number five so they function together if at all time value of money is the heart of financial management you'll find that the business or financial asset valuation will be the aspect of what may be the brain right brain your brain probably might be kind of uh, maybe not stable but if your heart is functioning you'll, you'll find that you still live right but your brain is uh, unstable so you'll find that there are some things that you can't literally do right so you'll find that uh, topic number five is also one of the most important topics in financial management topic number five will also make it one of the most important topics in financial management that's why you mark it with what with an asterisk after that case my good students if at all you can proceed to the next topic which is basically topic number six in this case you are talking of topic number six introduction to so we are talking of our topic number six we are talking of introduction to capital structure decisions introduction to capital structure decisions introduction to capital structure decisions so this is what you realize right this is what you realize that topic number five all the concepts that we have studied or rather tool of our study in topic number five will affect us directly it will affect us directly in topic number six all the items that we are going to study in topic number five it will affect us directly 
without going to any any, any other corner you'll find that it will, it will affect us directly in topic what in topic number in topic number six so also that will make it one of the most also important topic that you can literally have in financial management so this is what you realize my good students that there is a form of interrelationship between these topics whereby you are saying topic number four will affect us directly in topic number five again you realize that topic number five will affect us directly in topic number six so see this impact aren't you guys to understand this impact very well aren't you guys to understand this impact very well if you have missed a concept in topic number four what will happen in topic number five you are going to struggle in topic number five imagine that mess and again if you struggle in topic number five that is to say you can't handle topic number six comfortably so again you'll also struggle in topic number six why is it that most of the people normally tend to say that my financial management is quite uh, hard financial management is not hard you'll find that this person will say that fm is hard simply because this person did not understand topic number four and if you if you have not understood topic number four literally it will affect you all through in your financial management it will affect you all through both in financial management intermediate as well as in financial management what advanced level so you'll find that topic number four is very important then again look at topic number seven so after you're done with topic number six proceed to topic number seven topic number seven you'll find that literally again it relates directly now with all the other topics that you've done and now we'll be talking about introduction to capital budgeting introduction here to capital budgeting introduction to capital budgeting introduction to capital budgeting so introduction to capital budgeting this is the impact you see what we did in topic number four mostly and what we did in topic number six it will affect us directly that is to say literally <laughs> you can't handle you can't and i'm using you can't i'm using the word can't right with capital letters you can't handle topic number seven if you're not good in topic number four and if you're not good in topic number six that is to say topic number seven just forget it you can't handle it. you can't handle it. so that's why it is important for us to always master this so looking at these four topics looking at these four topics if we can give it analogy of human being right we having our heart right we having probably our brain uh-huh we having probably our eyes and maybe also we having what now we are having our kidney important parts in the human body which if at all one is missing you can't function properly you can't function properly many of the items are internal right if your internal organs one of it is not functioning clearly that is to say at least you can't do what you can't live a normal life so that's why i'm insisting that these four topics these four topics these four topics these four topics are literally everything that you need to know in financial management main elements that you need to grasp because you'll find that this student probably this person will be very good in theory and this person will master will master these topics clearly so and you probably you've mastered all the other topics but you're missing this topic the person who has mastered theory in these four topics this person is most likely to pass exams compared to you who who you mastered what the other the other topics the reason why Malimu is saying like that this is how uh, fm normally tends to work right probably a question will come you're given a question part a or basically uh, part a maybe relates with a certain concept of determination of present value interest factor part two probably will go to the aspect of valuation maybe of bonds and you're talking of irredeemable part three maybe you're asked of wcc or maybe you're asked of wmcc 
So you'll find that if you mess, this is not like the statement paper, that is where the challenge of FM usually is. This is not a statement paper. So if you tend to mess in part A, that is to say part B will be wrong, part C will be wrong, and probably part D will be wrong. If with a very small mistake, if you mess in part A, that is to say you're going to affect all these other parts directly. And in that case, you'll find that this is not entry. Like for FR, you know, FR, they normally tend to look at what are the entries. But what will happen here is that there's that relationship that if you mess here, meaning that the other one will not be correct, the other one will not be correct. Whatever that might save you probably now is what are the formulas. That is what might save you. That is what might save you, the formulas. But the aspects of computation, you're going to miss it out. So whatever Molimu is saying that on these four topics, you don't you not only need to be good, be perfect. Not good, be perfect on these four topics. And you can attest to this even if at all you've done your exams or you're going to do exams. You're going to attest to this that. The moment you're perfect on these four topics that I've literally described here, passing management accounting, or rather passing financial management will be very, very easy. You literally pass financial management very, very, very easily. So make sure that, and I'm really insisting that, and I'll always insist as we proceed, make sure that you are perfect, not good. Make sure that you are perfect on those four topics. Make sure that you're perfect on those four topics. I've really insisted on that. I've really insisted on that because I know the importance of that. So after that bit, that should take us to basically topic number eight. This is basically topic number eight. Topic number eight, my good students will be required to understand the concept to do with what? Financial statement, financial statement analysis, financial statement analysis, financial statement analysis and forecasting. Financial statement analysis and forecasting. You see, like uh, for those probably who attended the far yesterday, there is this concept that we studied, right? Or rather that you mentioned you're going to look at the aspect of ratio analysis, the aspect to do with common size. You see the same, same concepts, the same, same concepts that we literally looked at in uh, financial reporting are the same, same concepts that you're going to look at under this topic number eight, which is literally financial statement analysis, whereby we'll be having common size, we'll be having basically ratio analysis, we'll be having basically termination of our, uh, basically using sales method, right? So you'll find that you'll be having in a cash budget, the aspect of forecasting. So you'll find that uh, this topic literally is general and the same, same topic, we share it directly with what? We share this topic directly with financial reporting. We share this topic directly with financial, with financial reporting. So you'll find that this is not long. Actually, this is one of the shortest topics that we'll be having. With the strategy that you're going to use, you'll find that that will be the shortest topic that we can, that we'll always be having. So after looking at that case, my good students, if you can, if at all you can proceed to topic number nine. Topic number nine here basically will be expected to deal with working capital management Talk about working capital management working capital management anytime in whichever unit that you're doing in whichever unit that you're doing whichever course that you're doing anytime you see working capital the whole idea is always about what your current assets and current liabilities your current assets and current liabilities so again here you'd find that the knowledge that you had in relation to your financial accounting will be very important at this point, should be very important at this point. The working capital management, the concepts that you literally did in your financial accounting and also partly financial uh, reporting, you'll find that they will really help you in handling working capital management. Because at this point, you're going to be asked how to manage your cash. Of course, you normally tend to have various methods but more cash management model, Miller or cash management model. We'll be talking about inventory. All of, um, uh, for those who did probably management accounting, 
you can all recall the concept of economic order quantity, right? In this case, we'll be talking about receivables management, talk about basically trade payables management. It's all about the elements of current assets and current liabilities. So that will make this topic to be one of the easiest topic, one of the easiest topic in financial management. This will make it one of the easiest topics in financial management. I'm going to mark it with an aesthetic because you know very well that this topic is also very important because for the purpose of exams, it will never miss. For the purpose of exams, this topic will never, will never miss. That topic will never miss completely. It will never miss. Then that should take us to basically topic number 10. What will you be expected to cover in topic number 10, my dear students? Topic number 10 here will be expected to cover the concept known as what? Dividends decision. Dividends decision. And you'll find that majority of the concept in this topic is literally theoretical. Majority of the concept in uh, basically topic number 10 is more of theory. It's more of, it's more of theory. So that won't take us long to, to, to basically uh, cover. And Monimo is going to share the strategy or now we are going to deal with that, or now we are going to deal, or now we are going to deal with that. So uh, looking at that case, talk about basically uh, topic number 11. Topic number 11 is also one of the most important topics, right? And that one you find that it will be having a component of topic number four. It will be having a bit of a component in topic number four. So in this case, we'll be required to understand the aspect of what? Introduction to portfolio analysis. Introduction to portfolio. Introduction to portfolio analysis. Introduction to portfolio analysis. Introduction to portfolio analysis. And you realize this that ever since this syllabus was amended, this topic has never missed in exams. It is always there. It is always there. It is always, it is always there. This topic, it is always there. That topic, our uh, portfolio, it is always there. So make sure that at least at any given point in this uh, course of hours, make sure that you are good in introduction to portfolio analysis, a very important topic, a very important topic. Again, <laughs> the beauty part of it is that it is very short. It is literally something that you can do with one session. Portfolio analysis, is very short to the point that we can literally clear the whole topic of portfolio analysis with one with one session. But also very important. That is what you should know. Very short, very important. And again, if I can add, very easy. Because you'll find that if at all you've mastered a bit of topic number four, working out introduction portfolio analysis, again, it will be very, very easy. Because some all these other concepts, like part of topic number six, will also affect basically what topic number eleven, which is what portfolio analysis. So once you are done with that bit, my good students, that will take us to. We see that we are having roughly fourteen topics. So topic number twelve here in our course. Topic number twelve. Looking at topic number twelve here because that was topic number eleven. Topic number 12 is more of what? Is more of theoretical part, which in this case, we're talking about what? Islamic finance. Islamic, Islamic finance. A theory component, theory component. Islamic finance, it is a theory, 100% uh, theory when it comes to matters with financial management. So after then we're talking about 12, basically, Looking at topic number 13, which is also very theoretical. Uh, so talk about topic number 13. This is an uh, aspect to do with personal finance. Personal finance, this is also theory. That is also theory, personal finance. Again, these are concepts that basically we'll find that Molimu will be relating it to us. Molimu will basically relating it to what we normally tend to do, what we normally tend to do in our day-to-day -day activities, in our day-to-day in our day-to-day -day activities. So that is very important to note. Uh, that is very important to note. So after that bit, that should take us to the last topic. That should take us to the last topic here, which is basically topic number 14. 
I know all of you must guess the last topic in every uni that you normally tend to have is always about what? It's always about the emerging issues, right? It's always about the emerging issues. So these are basically contemporary issues, or rather just talk of it as emerging, as emerging issues, emerging issues. For emerging issues, I know we are talking about cryptocurrency. I know at this point you're talking about blockchain technology. I know at this point we are talking about Internet of Things. How is this affecting our concepts of financial management? So by the time we are through with our course, we should be expected to cover the topics that Molimu has listed here, 14 topics. And this is a strategy that you're going to use, my dear students. Out of these 14 topics, you will realize that I'll be having the first three, these are theory, right? I'll be talking of basically, uh, that is uh, topic number 10, which is theory. Topic number 13, 12, basically these are what? These are theory. So out of the 14 topics, how many theory topics do we have? We are having the three, right? We are having four, we are having seven topics. Seven topics, they are theoretical. That is to say, you're talking about a half of the syllabus for financial management. Seven topics are theoretical. Seven topics are theoretical. That will emphasize on what Molimo mentioned about how important the theory is. So, this is what we normally tend to do. You remember by the time uh, before you do your exams, you must have cleared everything. And also, you must have, have, or rather, we must have time to do our revision. So, the strategy that Molimo normally tend to use always, and that's why we normally tend to clear the syllabus and have our revision, this is a strategy that Molimo has always been using. And it has always worked. It has always worked, right? So, immediately after this class, I'm going to share the first three topics. I'm going to share the first three topics, which are theoretical. I'm going to share topic number one, topic number two, and topic number three. So that when we start, whatever that you'll be doing, I'm going to introduce topic number one, the overview. I give you the concepts, basically, of what we are going to, uh, maybe uh, what we should understand when it comes to financial management. I'm going to give you, basically, key concepts. The same, same class, I'm going to introduce topic number four. The same, same class, I'm going to introduce topic number four. So how we are going to be working it out, we do a computation. Say, like, for example, we meet today, right? We do a computation part as you're handling out the theory part. Because theory, because you'll be having the notes already in advance, I'll just be explaining some key concepts that you need to grasp as we proceed. So that is a strategy that, I'll always tell, that I've always been using. Like, we work the computation part, as we're handing out the theory. With this, you'll find that by the time we are through with topic number four, we could have cleared all these other, the first three topics. By the time we are through with topic number four, at the same time, we'll be clearing the first three topics automatically. Then as we proceed to the next, probably, uh, topics for computation, I'm going to share the notes for uh, these other notes. Topic number 10, topic 12, 13, and 14, because they are theoretical. So. By the time you are looking at basically the computation part, you guys will also finding time to go through the theory. So Molim will just be explaining key concepts on this theory. Trust me, you'll find that by the time you are clearing like these three months, we'll have covered all this computation. And because we will always be touching on the theory, we will have cleared the syllabus within the shortest time period. The advantage again that we normally tend to do, remember our strategy, the one that we're also using in financial reporting what you realize is that we have the pre-recorded version as well this pre-recorded version kindly use them to the maximum to the point that already we have the videos for all these topics right we have the videos for all these topics from topic number one to topic number 14. so what you'll be doing is at least Whenever you find time, whenever you find time, if at all Molimu is saying that tomorrow we are going to handle topic number four, 
take your time, go through the videos because these classes you already have them in advance. Remember, like whatever I'm going to teach you guys today is the same concept that I taught last semester. Whatever that I'm going to do differently this time round probably is to handle some questions which were tested in the last sitting. But course work, course work is always the same with additional probably of other questions that we didn't handle in the pre-recorded version. But ideally, the concepts are always the same. What I taught last semester, it is exactly the same thing I'm going to teach this semester with an additional of questions which were tested of late or rather lately. So you'll find that what I'm telling you guys, like, say for example, you're going to handle topic four tomorrow. What you need to do is to find time, even if it's one hour or 30 minutes, go through these videos so that by the time Olimu is coming to class, you are not that green. You are not that green. You'll be having a concept that if Molly is talking like this already, you had already watched it on the video. So it will not be green. This will provide us with an ample time of doing more questions, of doing so many questions within a class. And by the time we are doing so many questions, what will be the impact? The impact will be you guys, you, you are going to master, you're going to master all these concepts clearly. You're going to master all these concepts clearly. So this strategy, it has always worked. You'll find that in class, because already you've gone through these questions or rather the videos. So in class, it will just be a matter of us going through what? Going through some, some main concepts. So that's the strategy that again, we're going to use this semester. And you'll see by the time we reach probably towards uh, the time of revision, I know we'll have covered all these, all these elements. So that is the strategy that we'll be using. We've talked of the strategy. We've talked of the key areas that you must be very good at. And we've also talked of the rules of the class, what you must always tend to follow anytime you're handling, anytime you're handling financial management. And by the time you're through with this, you'll agree with Mwalimu that financial management, you'll agree with Mwalimu that financial management will be very, very easy. I know you're going to enjoy, I know you're going to enjoy financial management and that perception that probably you might have had somewhere that you know financial management is somewhat tricky. No, financial management is not tricky. Financial management is not hard. It's not hard if you follow the procedures and the tricks that Molimu has given us. So that is what we need to have whenever we are looking at financial management. And I believe you guys, you've literally, you've literally copied this, right? So this will be our map. This will be our guiding. This will be our guiding, our guiding map. This will be your guiding map. So that point, I just want to open this for general question, comments uh, before uh, maybe I share these documents. Skola, having anything to say? After Molimo has talked about all that you expect, tell us what might, what might you have heard of financial management? Mm, I have heard of financial management. Mm -hmm. I've done a little bit time value of money, all those things, capital budgeting, capital structure. Uh -huh. However, uh -huh. I think I uh -huh. had that uh, negative mind that it's difficult. Uh -huh. Or I want, to, I want to blame my lecturer, the university. No, don't blame your lecturer. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we have like, there's like a small percentage that a teacher plays, I believe. That's true. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. I, want to, I, I don't know. I just didn't pick it well. Uh, if I okay. compare to the unit, uh -huh. I think we are going to do it. I am going to do it. I'm going to, and I hope I won't have to retake it. That is the spirit we should be having. Perception is also very key, right? Perception is also very key. I, I know you're going to love financial management, and you literally find that majority of you, you can literally be sitting with your colleagues, assisting them for financial management. That's the beauty with all our classes. You'll find that you can get scholar somewhere. Scholar is really guiding her fellow mates on understanding, on how to understand financial management. That is good, scholar. That is good. You, you're open. You mentioned. Jacinta, anything that you can say about financial management, what you might have heard, what maybe you expect? Jacinta, you come on network in Kimbia. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on mute. 
I think I'm not going to be able to mute. I'm not going to be able to mute. I'm not going to be able to mute. I'm not that old school. <laughs> you know, I think, I think generally, yeah? I think generally what I've heard is siku uh, raisi. But uh-huh. I think if if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. Uh-huh. We are here for the hard times and the switch times. So uh-huh. let's see how it goes. Your perceptions are true. Financial management is very easy. Or were you in when you were searching? I'm going to get to the end. I was in. I was in all the time. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So perception, it's not like uh, that's how, and I've given you the reason why people normally tend to say that financial management is hard. You'll find that uh, if, uh, and that one I'm going to repeat, probably for those who have joined again, you'll find that if you miss time value of money, trust you me, and probably a bit of uh, business valuation, you haven't understood the concept. Is it as well as what you go to? You can go to the end of the day, right? You can go to the end of the day, and you can go to the end of the day. And you can go to the end of the day, and you can go to the end of the day. You know? So basically, financial management is not hard. So long as you follow the procedure that Morimo has given us in the tricks, you'll find that financial management will always be very easy. I know majority of the people, that's the perception that they normally tend to have, that you know what, financial management is quite hard, financial management, no. Financial management is just a secret. The four topics that I've mentioned, and you don't need, you, you know, not to be good, you must be perfect. You'll find that financial management is always very easy. I know you guys are going to agree with Molimo by the time we're reaching in between our syllabus, you'll find that you're going to agree with Molimo. Uh-huh. I'm having who? Uh, Dennis, Dennis tell us something, probably what you might have heard of uh, financial management, probably what, uh, anything, anything that you might have heard or anything that you know in relation to FM. Dennis, you can share with us something. Uh, Dennis, you are on you. I'm a Dennis, I'm sure you're on mute. Dennis, Dennis and Ashida Network. Probably maybe we can uh, get through, get through if not join with audio. Get through as a join our audio, get through as a join our audio. And uh, probably uh, as the rest, I'm seeing like uh, they're, they're really struggling with their, with, their, with their internet. So basically the summary with uh, financial management port Molimo will uh, want to share that uh, first of all let us take financial management as one of the easiest uh basically unit that you'll be having i've given you the reason how you're going or rather it's how you're going to make your financial management very easy to the point that you can literally sit with someone and guide him or her financial management basically it's always about strategy number one and also talk about what the four topics that morimo has mentioned which are literally the internal organs of a human being, right? Your heart, your brain, your liver, your kidney, your spinal cord, right? So these are literally the guiding elements that we must make sure that you're perfect. Because as at the end of the day, if all these internal organs are functioning properly in your body, you'll find that you'll be a very healthy person. You'll find that you'll be a very, very healthy person. The same concept will apply with financial management. Just be very good on what we've mentioned. Not good, but perfect. Follow the strategy clearly. Be very conversant with the main areas that are marked with asterisks, making them to be one of the most important areas that you must grasp. You'll find that FM will always be very easy. I'm seeing Dennis is back. Dennis, we're going to raise our network. I've never understood the relationship why normally that happens. Dennis, you can tell us something. Uh, hello. Tunakupata vizuri kabisa. Yeah, has a network balado. <laughs> Na eleo, network, network balado kabisa, inakubalika. Uh, so... Tell us something any that you might have heard of for financial management. Basically, is how an organization uh, 
manage 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 finances to meet his, to meet its obligation that is maybe make profit uh, make surplus come on it's a government institution yeah uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, very practical perspective of it. Whereby you find that uh and that is the that is also an angle that I always want us to look at it on a practical, on a practical perspective, on a practical perspective. So we've agreed, all of us, to teme yo mate ya, financial management in Gumu, to teme yo mate kabisa. We have a positive perception in financial management, and we find financial management to be very, very easy. So tomorrow we'll mark official uh basically uh commencement of our classes we are going to start with first of all i'm immediately after this class i'm going to share the first three topics after i'm sharing the first three topics tomorrow we're going to look at the overview of financial management at the same time tomorrow if time will allow we are going to introduce the heart of financial management we're going to introduce the heart of financial management which is literally time value of money. So that will be our strategy. I'll share the first three topics now. Then tomorrow we're going to introduce the overview part of financial management as well as the time value of money. And again, the same principle will apply. Remember, we mentioned that in our classes, and that is has always been our policy, of course. Our class for we are we having we're having, of course, uh, I mentioned this in our in our financial reporting class. We have this package for live virtual, the one that we are in today. We mentioned that scholar to Lisema, our limit is how many people? 15 people. 15. In our classes, all my classes, I normally don't allow more than 15 students for live virtual session. Live virtual to Kifika 15, Mimi si allow any other students. And I gave the reason why. For pre-recorded version, you can be as many as possible. Pre-recorded version, you can be as many as, as many as possible for pre-recorded version. But for live virtual, once you're 15, we don't allow any, any more students. Because like uh, literally, we mentioned that our classes should always be personalized, right? Because at the end of the day, we are not just doing this for exams. We are not doing this for an event. We are doing this basically for uh, we are doing this for the purpose of acquisition of knowledge. And once you are mainly, once you are like 20 and above or even 30, you'll find that the class will not be personalized. I want you to a point whereby whenever Scola is studying, whenever Jacinta is studying and she feels like, ah, I'm not getting this concept right, you know, like at that point, you can literally engage with Molimo directly, Molimo will guide you directly. But if you are many, I'm going to miss that chance. So you'll find that recorded version, we allow as many as possible, but for live virtual, of course, the limit is always 15. And basically, I always tend to share like that so that whenever you see like we are only 15, you should not ask Molim, Molim, why are we only few? Because the concept is we want to personalize this study because our goal is acquisition of knowledge. We are not doing this for an event. We are not doing this for exams purposes only. But during revision, of course, we normally open the windows to all. We normally open the windows to all. So to this point, guys, allow Mwalimu to share with us these first three topics. Then tomorrow, you said, we are going to start with the first topic as well as basically introducing what? The heart of financial management. So at this point, unless anyone has a question, Mwalimu will want to wish us a good night and we meet tomorrow. To introduce this concept officially. I have a question. Yes, Kola. Um, I still am not able to log in. I don't know. Did you change my password? Yeah, I changed the password. Did you not share? Not yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. I changed your password. Let, let, let me just share now. We thought that I'd shared with you. There is a time that you chat you texted. I think I'd share. Let me just share. I changed the mm -hmm. password in your account. So let me share. Okay. Yeah. And then on the on the is it on the page? Uh -huh. There's something like cookies blocked. Could it be the one that uh, maybe is blocking from uh, accessing the web? Um, I don't know. These IT things, I'm not good at it. Uh, what you need to do, or simple, simple you can do. Did you clear your cache yesterday? Yes, I did. You clear your cache? Yeah. If you, if you cleared your cache, then it uh, should, should work effectively. Let me just share the password that, uh, the password that I had, or the password that I had created. 
I share with you and I'll see if it will work. Okay. Okay, sounds. Okay, great. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. that, yes, probably money ni mifungia yote. Great. So this point, guys, let us meet tomorrow and you guys have a very good night.